Hey guys, Irene here. I'm gonna be doing a Photoshop tutorial today. A lot of you guys enjoyed my previous behind the scenes and wanted to see how I edited the images. And by the way, if you have not seen that video yet, I will link it in the description down below so you guys can check out how this shot was taken. I'm gonna show you guys some techniques that I have used in my previous uh, Photoshop tutorials but also a few new ones that I discovered recently. A little information on the shot. This was shot with my Canon 5D Mark III and my Canon 85mm 1.2 lens on a pretty gloomy overcast day. The settings are as usual at 1.2 for my aperture. Uh, let's see what did I have for ISO 100 and 644 my shutter speed. I shoot everything in RAW as well and I always start my editing with camera raw so let's do just a few adjustments here uh, her dress is a little bit uh, too bright there's just a few spots that the whites are really really white and you can't even see the texture of the dress so I'm gonna go ahead and lower the whites as you can see that really helped and we're just kind of gaining a little bit more detail back I'm gonna do the same two highlights just a little bit uh, I'm gonna also Make it a little bit more contrasting and with that pull the shadows up just a bit i also do like to go just a little bit with the clarity maybe just like plus three over here and um i think the white balance looks pretty good so i'm not gonna really change anything there so before and after just a few little adjustments in camera raw and i'm gonna go ahead and open the image in photoshop so one of the first things that I like to do is uh, crop my image. I have been really enjoying a more of a medium format type of crop. So 4x5 or 5x7. And also that kind of fits with the Instagram a little bit better. I'm going to kind of aim for 4x5 here. Also do like to have my images quite symmetrical most of the time and leave a little bit more head space so i think this crop actually looks really nice i'm gonna go ahead and say crop the image now what i usually do is i like to kind of stretch the sides of an image to fit into my crop so i'm gonna go ahead with the marquee tool select this area right here and you can get just a little bit of the basket or a little bit of the bike here it's not that big of a deal it shouldn't really distort it too too crazy now that i have this area selected i just make sure that i don't select the model here i'm gonna right click on the area say free transform right click on it again and then press distort and now i can just go ahead and move this area to the side right here and then i'm gonna just go ahead and apply the transformation and deselect the selected area here and free transform distort and then kind of move it around so now that i'm looking at it it doesn't actually seem that symmetrical i'm gonna go back things like that happen and oops i'm gonna fix the crop a little bit okay this seems a lot more symmetrical i always want the model to be in the very middle i'm gonna go ahead distort this a little bit more and then do the same on this side All right, this looks really good. So I'm happy with the crop. A little tip, if you guys want to use this technique in your images, make sure that whenever you are distorting and stretching the picture, if you have something in your shot like uh, bokeh or something a little bit more detailed, make sure that it doesn't look too unnatural because what I have in this image is a very soft blurry background I can really distort it as much as I did but if I had something that was a little bit more sharp and in focus it would look quite unnatural if that makes sense next thing I'm gonna do is work on the skin so I'm gonna zoom you guys in just a little bit I'm gonna duplicate the layer right click duplicate the layer press ok you always want to make sure you duplicate your layer before you do any type of adjustments just so you can kind of go back if you messed anything up uh, i'm gonna switch to patch tool 
I love using patch tool. If you guys have watched my channel for a while, you know that I just prefer this over a healing brush or spot healing brush. The way the patch tool works is that you just circle up the imperfection and then you drag it to the side where the skin looks clear. Now, I usually go pretty rough with my patch tool because I'm going to soften up the effect with the opacity layer. This is another reason why you always want to do this on a separate layer, on a duplicate layer, because you want to make sure that you will be able to um, lower the intensity of your edit. Another thing that I like to do, especially whenever I'm shooting full body, uh, I like to go into my sampler tool, sample up the skin, then take my brush and very lightly brush on the color back. That will really smooth the skin nicely. Um, I am using a tablet, so my pen that I'm using to add it picks up the pressure. But if you are using just your uh, mouse, I would definitely recommend to lower your opacity here to about, I don't know, about 10% maybe. And then slowly just layer those colors on. I'm going to now take this color right here. And kind of again gradually just put it right here and then I'm gonna pick up one here on the forehead and smooth out her forehead even more now again I wouldn't normally do this on a close-up portrait but because we are far away and her skin doesn't have that much um, texture in it anyways I can definitely get away with using my sampling uh, tool and sampling colors kind of painting them back on but again you have to be very 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 careful here and do it very light-handed again if you are not using a tablet just make sure your opacity is quite low here so this is before and after on the face and now if you do feel like it's too much again you can always go and lower the opacity and it's gonna make it look a little bit more natural I think I will lower it just a bit I'm gonna leave it at 89 right here I'm gonna go ahead and create another duplicate layer and I'm gonna work on these folds on her neck now this is something that is not that bad and doesn't bother me that much but I will take it out for the sake of showing you guys and because it might make the image look a little bit more clean and you know it's all in the details so as you just saw I'm just using a patch tool to quickly take it out and if there's still any little imperfections again I can take my sampling tool sample up the skin color there and then with my brush lightly brush it on by the way i don't think i mentioned it but i'm always always using this so the soft round pressure um, brush whenever uh if i did go a little bit too far i can always just take the eraser tool and just erase some parts or go back with the patch tool again Or just like I did with the face, you can always go and kind of lower the opacity just a bit. And it's going to make everything look a little bit more natural. And you guys know that I like to just merge my layers down. Next, I will fix the arm over here just a little bit. So... For this particular scenario, I'm going to use Dodge and Burn. Um, if you are a sponsor, you can get these Photoshop actions for free. Uh, I'm just going to play my highlight action. And if you're not a sponsor and you want to get this action, you can just watch a video on how to make it by me. I will leave it in the description down below. But I, I just use curves uh, for my Dodge and Burn. And then I'm going to do the shadow one just a little bit over here. All right, that looks great. And I'm going to make one more duplicate layer. And here again, I'm going to take up the sampler, sample up the skin color and just slightly brush it on just to kind of smooth out again the skin here. 
it's already so smooth anyways because I shot it on 1.2 we can just add just a little bit again to keep all the details um, better all right that looks great uh, I actually think this arm right here is still a little bit too dark so what I'm gonna do is open up the adjustment layers go to curves and over here I'm gonna bring it up just like that I'm gonna close it and then press Control I to invert my layer mask so now I can take a brush and paint on what I just did to any part of the image and I'm gonna paint it only onto her arm because that's the only spot that I want to be brighter okay that looks much much better Another little thing I'm going to do is go into liquify. Now, this particular dress right here doesn't have that much shape in the waist because it goes right underneath the chest area. And I want to define her waist just a little bit more. So I'm going to take this pucker tool right here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and I'm going to apply this slightly just to her waist. That's it. Just a few clicks like that. Another thing that I'm going to do is make her dress a little bit longer like this just stretch it out it will also make her appear a little bit taller also i don't know if you guys uh, see it but the we did have a flat tire so i'm gonna try to fix it just a little bit with the liquify this bike is very very old and rusted so <laughs> i'm just gonna do my best here to make it look quite natural and here okay that looks beautiful i'm gonna just press ok and as you can see this is just a very 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 tiny difference but overall it makes the picture look a little bit better so i'm gonna go merge these layers now I'm going to show you guys something new and something that I've been doing on a lot of my pictures recently. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer first, then go into filter and camera raw filter. Make sure that you are using the newest version of the Photoshop to have the option to go into filter and then camera raw. Uh, I'm going to go ahead into dehaze right here and I'm going to dehaze this image quite a bit, maybe just about here. Um, you have to just really kind of go about your own judgment. Now, as you can see, it makes the image quite desaturated. So I'm going to bring the vibrance back up and I'm going to make the contrast go up just a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to press OK. Now I'm going to take an eraser tool and I'm going to go ahead and lightly erase the model. Now what this will do is gonna make our subject stand out from the background even more. Like it's already pretty blurry and she already stands out from it, but this is just like an extra step to make your image look even more magical and more 3D. All right, so I have the model. Oh, I missed the arm over here too. Okay, so I have my model out from the background and now you can just go ahead and kind of play with the opacity uh, it's a little bit too harsh so I'm just gonna lower the opacity just a little bit so here's the before and after on that yeah, let me just kind of back it up and show it to you guys just like this so as you can see it kind of just makes the model stand up from the background even more and I really really like it I'm gonna go ahead and merge my layers uh, now another little trick uh, again. I'm gonna duplicate the layer again. I Always do it before My next steps. I'm gonna go into camera raw yet again uh, Now here on the profile I'm gonna go to browse and I'm gonna check off this artistic one now These are kind of the standard presets that come uh, with camera raw and you know normally they're not that great but I think some of these 
are pretty damn good so i'm gonna use this one the artistic 103 i'm gonna lower the amount of it just a bit so i'm gonna do the amount to around mm, yeah i would say like 43 and press ok so what it does is kind of mutes some of the greens, make them makes them a little bit more yellow. Uh, I just find that it really made the background a little bit more interesting. I quite like these unusual colors. Uh, I'm gonna go now into selective color on my adjustment layer. Her skin is a little bit too red for me right now, so I'm gonna go ahead on the red color and bring it back to the greenish side right here then go to yellow bring it a little bit more to the green side as well and also with this i'm gonna make it brighter and maybe mm, yeah yeah that looks a lot nicer yeah that looks great so i'm gonna go ahead and merge these and I'm going to open another selective color. And here is just all about kind of playing around with the tones. And I absolutely love using selective color for that. Let's go into the greens. And I'm going to make them a lot more green. I really want that contrast between the green and the yellow in the background uh, stand out more. So we're going to make greens more green. And also over here on the yellow, if you pull it to the left side, it turns the colors more blue. So we're going to give the green a little bit of a tinge of a blue here. Now I'm going to go into yellows and make them more yellow and even a little bit red right here. And then again with greens, just more green, more blue like that. That looks great. So this is the before and after on the little colors that we just did. As you can see, now the green stands out more and the difference between the yellow and the green in the background is a little bit more prominent. I really, really like the way that looks. Okay, so I think we are good with the colors here. That looks great. Now I'm going to do just a little bit more of dodge and burn. I'm going to just go ahead and play my actions. And like I said, they are free for my sponsors for my YouTube channel. Also, if you do become a sponsor, you will get the raw image that I'm editing right now. So you can kind of edit with me. But as I said, this will be only available for my sponsors. Uh, but if you do want to follow with exactly what I'm doing right now with Dodge and Burn, watch one of my videos on how to make those actions and you'll be sad. It's very, very easy to make if you want to make them yourself. Okay. I'm blabbing. I'm just going to play my highlight action and I'm going to go here on the face. I'm going to take the brush. I always like to go in the eyes, a little bit on the bridge of the nose, under the brow bone. Obviously, we got to go on the cheekbone, give it that highlight. You can go a little bit here on the braid. I want to highlight her arm here a little bit more. It looks a little bit flat. All right, that looks great. And I'm going to go with the shadow. What I like to do here is go a little bit on her eyebrow, on her lash line, always on her lash line. always underneath the lower lip it creates the shadow and it makes it look like the lip is a lot bigger it's all about that contour and i'm also gonna go and create more, sh more shadow over here on her dress just where her waist is Okay, that looks beautiful here i'm just gonna show you what just a little bit of that dodge and burn did right now so you can see it makes the image look so much more 3D. Um, it might be a little bit harsh. I can always go again on the opacity and tone it down just a bit. Yeah, that looks great. Now I'm going to go ahead and play with curves a little bit more and add even more interest to the background, make her pop from the background even more. So I'm going to go into adjustment layers, curves. I'm going to bring this up just a bit right here. Okay, now again, Control I to invert. 
Oops. I'm gonna take my brush. I'm gonna brush it on just in the very middle. And now I'm gonna take the eraser tool and erase it where the model is. You can also do this with the white and black. If I switch up to the white, I can go ahead and erase. And if I switch up to black, I can add that highlight. See, I'm adding it back on. And then if I switch back to white, I'm taking it off. So you can also do that, or you can use an eraser tool, whatever you prefer to use. But yeah, adding a little bit of a highlight right behind the model is a technique that a lot of photographers use. It will make the model be a little bit darker and stand out a little bit more against the background. So again, making the image more 3D. Now I'm gonna add just a slight vignette on the side to again, just create that illusion of that 3D effect. So again, I'm gonna do it with the curves and I'm just gonna pull it down right here. Control I to invert and then I can pick up my brush and apply it to whatever I want to. I'm gonna do it just on the sides of my image, just like so. So again, let me just show you quickly what that did before and after. It just kind of pulls you in more, right? I really, really love doing this effect. Uh, and finally, let's go back into Camera Raw. So I'm going to duplicate the layer again in case I do something I don't like and I, and I want to go back. I'm going to do Camera Raw. I like to kind of go back and just push up the clarity just a little bit more again. And also sometimes the contrast and, you know, some of the whites. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up that vibrance. It's a summary image. We want to make it nice, vibrant. All right, that looks beautiful. And now finally, our last little thing I'm going to do is sharpen up the image. Uh, again, I have an action that I made for sharpening all of my images. If you want to see how I made this action or how I sharpen the images in general, you can watch a video on that. I will link it in the description as well. So this is the sharpen action uh, and also my sponsors do get it for free as well. So this is before and after the sharpening. It really, really helps, especially if you're shooting at 1.2, just to make the image super, super crisp. Sometimes I don't, I just kind of lower it anyways. Okay. So this is it. This is our image. Uh, let's go ahead and compare it to the before. So this is before and after, before and after. I hope you guys enjoy it. For me, it's all about making that 3D effect, the 3D illusion, not only with the way I shoot the image and with my settings and with the way I position my model, but also it's a lot in the editing, how I use dodge and burn, how I use that stretch tool to make the image appear wider and then, you know, just kind of manipulating some of the details and making it look really, really crisp. Uh, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and give it a like. Subscribe to my channel. If you want to become a sponsor, you get a lot of perks when it comes to editing. So check that out as well. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!